Hi, my name is Connie Martin, and I'm a secondary education teacher in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I've taught English and creative writing to students of all grade levels and all abilities. And the paper that I'm going to present is a curriculum that I developed for our school's advanced creative writing course. One of the very first classes that I was handed as a new teacher was our school's creative writing course. And the course that I got was very similar to the courses that I took when I wanted to take creative writing in high school. And so we centered all of our units around the idea of genre theory, and we focused specifically on the genres of poetry, flash fiction, and short story, since these were the genres that we were learning about in English classes. We also talked about process theory and how writing was a process and learned the steps of the process or steps to that process. And then a lot of our lessons focused on improving writing skills like characterization, figurative language, imagery, and dialogue in our actual stories. And so this is the basics of the curriculum that I started teaching as a first year creative writing teacher. However, I quickly noticed that a lot of our students wanted to go deeper and explore more non-traditional genres and writing styles to better express themselves and align with their own interests. And so because of this interest, our school actually approved the development of the advanced creative writing curriculum that I'm gonna talk about today. And so this was designed to be the next step for students that wanted to go deeper than some of these more basic creative writing skills that we were learning in the creative writing course. And so this was really for students who wanted to further express themselves and explore more non-traditional genres that they wouldn't get the chance to explore in their English classes. Although I started developing this curriculum before the pandemic, once the pandemic hit, it became clear that I really needed to rethink the way that we were doing creative writing so that the curriculum that I created would work for our students and help them dive deeper into creative writing while still being able to conveniently switch between virtual and in-person learning as we were doing that all throughout the pandemic and still align with federal, state, and district mandates and initiatives, those that were both COVID related and those that were just educational related. And so I found that relating to skills wasn't necessarily going to be able to as easily meet all of those criteria. And I was looking for something that would unite the creative writing curriculum and help ensure that students were actually going deeper with their creative writing while still being able to fit the curriculum within all of the mandates and initiatives that I needed to as a secondary teacher. And so I turned to threshold concepts. Threshold concepts represent the fundamental shifts in thinking or insider knowledge that you need to understand in order to move from learners to experts in a discipline. And ADS actually proposed a set of threshold concepts that are specific to creative writing and argued that these creative writing threshold concepts can provide scaffolding and center curriculum around shared beliefs about writing and can help the field include diverse understandings of creative writing. So I chose to center the curriculum that I created for the advanced class around four of ADS threshold concepts. Specifically, I picked the concepts of authorship, genre, craft, and community. I picked these threshold concepts because they relate to looking at a writer's identity and influences. And these are the things that my students who wanted to be in the advanced creative writing class really wanted to learn about. They wanted to focus on who they were as writers and how they were influenced by the things around them. So authorship looks at how a writerly identity is constructed by a range of cultural forces and how we can critically examine the cultural messages about the identity and lifestyles of a writer. Genre talks about how there are no universal standards for good writing. However, there are conventions that are particular to establish genres. Craft talks about how different craft choices can produce different effects in the reading experience. And while you can't always predict those effects, you can think carefully about the risks you're taking when you make certain decisions in your writing and how those might impact the readers. And finally, community talks about how writers are formed by the communities in which they engage. And in order to really analyze craft choices, we have to understand the varying orientations of readerships and how diverse audiences come to text with diverse needs. So these are the four key understandings that students are expected to develop throughout their time in the advanced creative writing curriculum. In addition to using the threshold concepts to guide what my students were learning, I also incorporated elements of several other theories in the curriculum design. We used process theory, 
And so every single time that the students in this curriculum are asked to write anything, they are asked to undergo a process. And so they have to do some pre-writing, they have to write, and they have to do revision. They do have space and time built in the curriculum for that process to be fluid and flexible. So it doesn't have to be first turn in your brainstorming, then write, then revise, then you're done. They have the ability to go back and repeat steps or re-engage in steps as needed throughout their writing process. And they also have the ability to talk about, discuss, and use their own writing process and not a prescribed writing process. We also use genre theory. Uh, again, one of the th threshold concepts that we talk about in this curriculum is the threshold concept of genre. So we spend a lot of time looking at the conventions and styles of a work and how they're influenced and shaped by the purpose and audience of a work and the social and cultural factors surrounding the work. So we use a lot of genre theory in this curriculum. And finally, because my learners are very diverse, we use culturally responsive teaching and we provide a lot of opportunities in this curriculum to allow students to bring their own cultural knowledge and understandings, experiences, and backgrounds to the classroom and to their writing. So we're going to do a brief overview again because of time. This is a very brief overview of the curriculum. Our first unit is called Writer's Identity, and it focuses on that threshold concept of authorship. So the first thing they do is they analyze different portrayals of a writerly identity. And so first they discuss their current understandings of what makes a writer or who a writer can be, and then they get to go and find where they see writers in pop culture and the media and things that they're actually experiencing in their world. And they bring them into class and we view them and we analyze how writers are being portrayed in those things. And we talk about the ways that the writers that we see in culture are similar to us and also are different than us. And we talk about who is included and excluded and how these portrayals of writers' identities can both help shape our views of ourselves as writers and shape us as writers. And then we explore writers' processes. And so we learn about different writers' processes and discuss how each writer's process is different with videos from published authors that explain their writing processes and then students consider and reflect on their own writing processes and how they're similar and different to the writing processes we discussed in class. And finally, they pull all of this together in their digital memoir project, where they view and analyze examples of digital memoirs and discuss the craft choices and conventions of the genre, as well as how to blend multimodal elements with more traditional texts. And so here's where they're getting that first piece of genre and then they create a digital memoir about their own personal writer's journey. So they tie it all together and apply it to their own identity as writers. And they include the influences and experiences that have shaped their own writing and their writer's processes. And this will allow them to be able to get an idea of how each writer in the class is different and also help build a bit of a classroom community so that as we get further along, they feel more comfortable sharing their work with each other. Our second unit focuses on the ideas of genre, community, and craft, since these are a little bit more intertwined. So they begin with a genre research project. They work in groups to research the historical and sociocultural influences, conventions, and examples of a genre of their choosing. So here's where they get to bring in their own versions of genres that they read and they interact with and they engage with on their daily life. And then they analyze the importance of audience. So here's where they're starting to look at community and how one's community that one's writing for influences one's craft choices. And so we discuss the threshold concept of community and the audiences that writers write for. And then we analyze how these audiences influence writings and the choices a writer makes, specifically looking at examples from published authors. So let's take a look and analyze what an author writes and then hear from the author through some of their publications and interviews about why they made certain decisions and how they consider the communities that they're writing for in their writing. Then they'll have a collaborative writing project where they get to put this into practice. Well, they'll work collaboratively to write a short story for a specific audience that includes assigned elements. And then they'll discuss the craft choices that they made as they were writing in their groups and how these choices were impacting by the communities that they were writing for and the audiences that they were writing for. And finally, they'll pull it all together in a final genre writing project where they'll write a piece in a genre of their choosing and include a reflection about how they adhered to or broke away from the conventions of the genre and why they made those specific craft choices and how they considered the communities and audiences they were writing for throughout that process. 
In the third unit, they again focus a little bit more on that idea of community and how that impacts craft choices by exploring publishing and how and where they can get their work published. So first they explore publishing op options and they hear from published authors about ways to get their work published. And then they research different publishing methods and they look at the pros and cons of each, what genres get published most frequently in each type of publishing, the intended audiences and communities that are reached by each type of publishing and how to submit your work to these publishing places. And then they create a publishing plan based on the audiences and communities that they're writing for and the genres that they like to write in. And so they'll find a place or a way that they could submit their work to get it published and talk about why that place and that specific way of publishing is best for them as an author and how it reaches the intended audiences that they want to reach and how it connects with the genre that they're writing in. And then they'll reflect on what they learned about publishing creative writing and how community impacts their creative writing publishing decision. And finally, they'll tie all of this together in the fourth unit, which is their personal project. And this is where they look at all of the threshold concepts and bring them all together. So they'll propose a unique creative writing project that connects with their personal creative writing interests and goals and showcases their understanding of authorship, genre, craft, and community threshold concepts. They also identify at least three specific skills, concepts, or techniques to focus on improving throughout the course of the project. And then they'll have many lessons and activities to help them improve those skills, as well as conferences with the teacher and peers. We'll do a modified writer's workshop where they have the ability to engage with their peers and talk about the craft choices that they made and how those craft choices impacted different readers. And so the writer's workshop will really focus on craft choices and examining the effects of those craft choices rather than looking at their projects and talking about what they should change or fix. And finally, they reflect on what they have learned about creative writing and how their understanding of the threshold concepts of authorship, genre, craft, and community impacted their writing and growth throughout the project and the course. And so this is designed to pull it all together. So I know that was a very, very brief overview of the course. For conclusion, this curriculum artifact demonstrates one way that we can use as threshold concepts of authorship, genre, craft, and community to the secondary level to guide curriculum design. And by doing that, it helps to adapt and change lessons to meet students' diverse needs while still adhering to federal, state, and district mandates and initiatives and ensuring that students are able to continue to grow deeper in their knowledge of creative writing. And so instead of focusing on the skills and shifting to focus on the concept, it allows that flexibility to be able to adapt the lessons while still ensuring that students are getting to grow in the ways that they have asked to grow. Thank you so much for listening to this talk. I have a full list of references included in the accessibility document, but here are the few references that were directly cited in this presentation. I look forward to being able to answer all of your questions.